Ladies and gentlemen, now tuned into the motherfucking greatest. This is the Hype Reality Podcast. Listen. Hype-reality.com. Listen. Oh, I'll kill ya. Hey, welcome to the latest edition of the Hype Reality Podcast. My name is Emilio, a.k.a. Triple D, a.k.a. Nick and Dirk Diggler, along with my co-host. Ephraim. And the Black Rangers back. Yes, sir. Renewing his presence here. Fucking good to have you back. Um, let's let's fucking jump right into it. Let's get into some shit. My beef was with Lior because I think he's a fake CEO and I think he's fronting on my culture, but he can't front on anybody else. And I'm calling him out publicly and I want him to stop trying to rape my culture, go make some money with some other people. But they don't let their culture feel it, but they make money from it and they can't mon- make any money or get any respect in their culture. That's why they're in our culture. Because the minute that they were allowed to be there, they would go, but they just can't. They make money off us every day. Let's make some money off them. Ephraim had a had a weird experience at a Caribbean restaurant owned <laughs> by white people the other day, and so we want to expand on that. Ephraim, can you tell us about what happened and where he touched you? Oh God, where he touched you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know the story. I don't know what happened. So this is this, this will be news to me. But was it Golden Crust you were at? I was waiting, waiting for some signs. It's all gonna get cut. Or whatever. Like uh, what yeah. happened? <laughs> So, oh, you like, gonna cut all that, but you didn't cut the shit when you call me Blackie. <laughs> <laughs> so you gonna cut all this? That's what happens when there's only one person is editing this shit. You know, <laughs> like he's gonna leave this. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Bear that shit in there. So let's talk about this experience Ephraim had at the Caribbean restaurant that was, uh, you know, saved by the white man. Oh God! Well, like, <laughs> no, that's just relevant. Um, well, basically, I mean, like the whole idea of like. Cult, being a cultural vulture has been been reintroduced by like people like Damon Dame Dash, Dash and and now the conversation surrounding Iggy Azalea. Um, why don't you explain hip-hop. that? The, why don't you explain what cultural vulture, vulture is? I don't even fucking. I'm still learning what the fuck it is. What the hell you think this shit is, Millie? Really? Like, if I'm right, it's like people that are like literally just they're just feasting on something that's literally not them. Like they're just banking on something that they pretty much have nothing to do with. But they see an opportunity to capitalize on it. Like the idea of like all these, you know, especially at a certain time, all these like Jewish or Caucasian guys like fronting all this money for hip hop or whatever because they saw a lane to make money off of it. Oh, I see. So they started giving these certain people money to make albums and do all this shit. And now they run the whole shebang like right. with fucking clothing. Like these guys that have nothing to do with any of these fucking moves or whatnot. Oh, Mainly like non African Americans, whatever they're, they're getting these African Americans or Hispanic people, or whatever, to stylize it, do this and that, blah, blah blah. They're putting the money behind it. They're making most of the fucking money back. And on the other hand, like these guys aren't like Kanye West complaining about how he can't get a fucking clothing line up because of all these people that have closed that for everybody else. Like these guys mm-hmm. stronghold of this shit. This is ours. That's it. Like Iggy Azalea, an Australian bitch who uh, grew up in the fucking suburbs of whatever aborigine town she was from or some shit, and now she raps like some fucking DeBrat Atlanta bitch and talks about struggles of getting money and popping pussy and shit like that. Like, she's, she's a cult, she seems like a culture vulture. Yeah. She's, she's profiting from another way of life, like another people's way of life that she has nothing really to do with. So what, so what was your experience? Well, yeah, I, I never mm-hmm. gave too much thought to the whole idea of culture vulturing, like in particular to like hip hop in terms of like picking out individuals. But I, that, the idea of it really, um, like I said, it's been brought up again in recent times. But like recently, <laughs> from my experience, uh, I was supposed to go to this meetup where this group that's based out in uh, Crown Heights. And if anyone knows anything about Crown Heights right now, in particular, what? off of like uh, Franklin Ave, it's been changing a lot drastically within the, la- the demographics and within the last 10 years, I would say, Brooklyn. where a lot of white people, what hipster ass people have been coming in. And it's still very much like a lot of Caribbean influences and, and, um, and um, predom- I would say, still say predominantly black and Jewish, but like there's definitely these little pockets where people are kind of living and, you know, and taking up space. And um, in this group that I was supposed to go join in, they had this uh, event where they wanted to have some casual, you know, authentic Caribbean cuisine. And I was like, and it was this place called Gladys. And I live in the surrounding area. And uh, not that I'm some expert on Caribbean cuisine, but I've been to a good amount of these places. I've been places. to the real spots. <laughs> and I was like, 
I've never heard of this place. Mm. And so I just started doing mm. a little digging Neck and bro. like looking at this fucking place called Gladys, and it looks like the most sterile fucking whitewashed Caribbean spot I've ever seen. <laughs> and like I just started doing a little more digging and it turns out it's run by this, you know, this Jewish guy who moved to the area about four years ago and he just up and decided, you know, I think I'm gonna make some Caribbean cuisine. Keep in mind, again, it's not like some food desert of like, of like Jamaican or Trinidadian or Caribbean food. Like there's these a lot of established Plutcher places. Shit <laughs> That's yeah, exactly. So it was kind of weird that this guy's been doing this shit. So like, initially, just kind of got these a lot of these feelings going in me. But then I was like, okay, I had less and less problems with the restaurant, but then more problems with the idea of it and the people that are going to be going and experience it because. I know that the what the clientele this place is gonna be is basically gonna be a way for like these hipster ass white people to go and experience Caribbean food without dealing with Caribbean people <laughs> like or dealing with uh, more specifically black people because I see this shit all the time. I'll go to like some spot that you I go to. You see like three people in that fucking place. Like usually when you walk <laughs> by a lot of those Caribbean spots, those mm-hmm. Jamaican food places, African food places, there are like three people there besides the people that work there. Yeah. Like they're usually How pretty. How this place been open? This place, this place has been open for about two years. And it's funny because, like, when he opened, they were just serving, like, regular sandwiches and shit. So, like, he only been serving Caribbean food for the past, like, couple months or so. Like, it's, it's like a recent change. He's, like, up and decided, I, wanna, I don't want to do this sandwich shit no more. I want to fucking do this Jamaican shit now. <laughs> like, and... Um, Is it the same Jewish guy to, like, the t- same, touch your ass or something like that or whatever the fuck you said? They don't, like, fucking touch my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. It's in fucking no man's land. <laughs> like, but from what I've read, and, and like I've read like some reviews on it, like done by like Village Voice or even New York Times, which is like, calling this guy like a, a basic a genius for doing this shit that my grandparents has been doing for years, and I've been. I just think forever. it's fucked up because it's almost like they, as soon as like you know they get some Caucasian hands on, it's like they they've domesticated this fucking <laughs> fucking way of eating. You get me like this food style or whatnot. Like as soon as as soon as any kind of like foreign presence. They get their hands on it. It's all of a sudden like, oh man, it's like it's almost like it's classifying, like making it classier or yeah. like yeah, domesticating it. It's like it solidifies this wild, it. dirty, savage foods for the beast. Yeah, all, all of a sudden, this this but, food that's been good for years has, has credibility. Yeah. Because but that happens all the time with all all over the board. Like when yeah. they're talking about jazz music, how was, like white people get more into jazz music. It was really it was really like a black thing like years and years ago, mm. and it's like it's different now because I guess more white people are doing. Stuff that like we've been doing, yeah. They, and, like, like jazz they domesticated that monkey right. music. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> they did a good but that's job. A, that's the thing. Like from what I've from what I've read and from what I understand, and I'm I plan on checking this place out so I can just whatever get to, to the bottom of this shit. Get to the bottom of it. But from what I understand, everyone's basically kind of telling me what I re- already suspect. It's like the food isn't bad, but if you've been like if you're actually Caribbean or whatever, you're not gonna necessarily be impressed by this shit. But like if this is your entry point towards Caribbean or whatever food. It's a, it's a nice good buffer. starting place. It's a good starting point, I guess. <laughs> and the people are nice enough. He's hired black people, I guess, to give a front to the yeah. the, the, the restaurant. And Culture it, vulture. Yeah, so like, I don't know. But at the same time, Culture vulture. so again, these these things got brought up in my mind, but then I was like, well, how hard of a crusade am I, I going to go for this shit? Am I going to like, when I go eat some like Asian fusion cuisine, I'm like, hey, what are you guys doing Banking off these uh, Korean people, you're not you're a culture vulture, blah blah blah. Like I mean, like you said, people across the board do this shit all the time. I guess I'm only tied about it because it's my culture, or I see, or I have some kind of you know tie to it that Aww. I'm all like suspicious of this dude and his motivations. But like, <laughs> it's not something that I constantly think about. If it's someone else's culture, I have no problem with it. So dude, I guess white I can... people love taking just everybody else's shit and making it theirs. Like, <laughs> look at Mexican food. I have never, and I'll say you, I've been to a lot of Hispanic people's houses. I have never been offered chips and salsa at anybody's fucking house but white people. As like the fucking, and then whenever they. Look at in Florida, it's like Tijuana Flats. Mm-hmm. Started by yeah. some white dude. Everybody, oh man, I love that Mexican food and all this. Shit. What the fuck? <laughs> fucking Mexican food? Fucking Chipotle, this whole Southwestern whatever tip. Like they turn that shit around or whatever. Like they fucking hate. They want to get them out of this country and shit like that or whatever just because they want to brand that shit. Like eventually it's going to be American food. It's my <laughs> American burrito and my American. Baby, yeah, have thing, you ever like, seen any like. Any Mexicans just make like an like a regular like American food restaurant. <laughs> like that'd be weird if you want like they make everybody's restaurant. That's what I said. Like. If I get if I get rich enough, I'm gonna start like some like German like cuisine. <laughs> oh my black ass! I'm like, ah, nigga. That's I've the thing. Like, this, this this guy, the owner's name is Michael Jacoper. Like he seems like 
a nice enough dude. I don't think he's going out there in, intentionally, uh, intentionally, uh, yeah, whatever, yeah, trying yeah. to destroy or disrupt whatever. But that's the thing he said. Like when a white person does it, like there's they stand to benefit in a way that other people can't benefit because we live in this this society or whatever. Like just because he is who he is, and because he's doing it in his neighborhood, and because he has his clientele of people that are coming to his restaurant, it's put in a certain light, and it's seen as you know, he, and he has the opportunity to get like on Village Voice mm-hmm. or the New York Times and people are checking for him in a way that they might not check for It's the way of the people. world, man. Yeah, man. It's fucking bullshit. I know. <laughs> man, they, well, Get used to it. Well. I'm about to run up in there like, hey, man, you put some is. put some brothers on the wall. <laughs> Burn this page down. <laughs> Let me taste this. That shit ain't real. <laughs> I ain't paying for none <laughs> of this food. You should be paying me, motherfucker. <laughs> that like golden crust. That's the shit. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> golden crust. Golden Crest is sucks. like the McDonald's. Like, I know. Actually, that's the only thing that popped in my head. It's actually not that bad. I, I, I eat every yeah, day. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You go there all the time. <laughs> you know what the fuck you're talking about. That's the reason why I, that's the reason why I know it, because you go there all the time. Yeah, it's actually not that bad, Golden Crest. <laughs> um, oh, nah, yeah. man. Well, it's, it's, just, it's just weird, you get me? Because they just all of a sudden, as soon as they get that... You know, they get that fucking uh, gatekeeper or some shit. As soon as they have that one ambassador to fucking touch it or put his uh, his print on it, all of a sudden, like, everybody just kind of flocks towards it. Like, okay, cool. We know this is safe. Go with this or whatnot. Like, it's just, it's fucking, it's very weird. That adds to the the part that's kind of frustrating. And when you talk about uh, cultural appropriation and, and, um, and just, like, the sterilization of, like, someone's culture and food and... And uh, and then them taking it and selling it back to you <laughs> for more than what it's worth. Literally, they're gonna yeah. hike the price on that shit. Like when you go to those little Caribbean spots and shit like that, you buy like a fucking platter for like six bucks, seven yeah. bucks. Yeah. You go to that place, it's gonna charge you forty eight dollars for a quarter jerk chicken or some shit, <laughs> yeah. some quinoa, whatever, fucking with peas and stupid shit with like kale on the side. Yeah, a nice mm. kale smoothie. And it's like, oh man. But we're gonna check it out, or I'm gonna check it out at least. And yeah, when is that meet up? Huh? When I is that? Passed. Oh, it passed. Uh, oh. Actually, not in past, but like they, there was only res- there was only RSV for like ten people, so I couldn't. I can't go with them. Oh. But I'll go. To, I'll go down there eventually. And I passed by there a bunch Fuck of you times. Just go, man. Like, nah, man. Go That's the thing. Whatever. Like, it's, show it's, up. It's fucking out of my way. Like, I literally uh, have to fucking pass like ten Caribbean spots to like get to uh, that one. I don't want to go that shitty ass. To, like, it's gonna have to be like somewhere where I'm in the area and like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna consciously do this shit. Like, because again, I'm not gonna be blown away. Buy the shit, and to be a, to be fair with this dude, there's only so many ways you can fucking jerk that chicken. Like pause, like there's only so many hey, things pause. you can. Do. There's Jesus only so Christ. many things you can do to this food. Like, yep, that's that's it. You've you've done it. Like, I don't know, man. I'd rather fucking help out those other guys that are trying to. They're fucking their markets get yeah. eaten up by this yeah. Jewish bastard. Like, <laughs> but you just want to try it, right? So it's not like I just want to yeah, try it. Yeah, so exactly. I don't come off like ignorant. Yeah. Like, say all these like strong opinions and like not even try the food. Exactly. That's, so that's ultimately when you when you talk about food and like. Even what do you want to draw? It's like appropriation shit on it. Like the food has to be good. The food is good. Then like that that quells a lot of people's grumblings and rumblings. Good about, old Jimmy's. Like, yeah. Jimmy's Diner. Yeah. Jimmy's Diner is run by. They make some great ass uh, grits, chicken and really waffles. Good. Yeah. These hipster they ass people. Cheese grits. These guys know something about grits. So like, <clears throat> I ain't sleeping on. I ain't sleeping on no hipster ass people and their, <laughs> their food culinary skills. So don't get me wrong, but you know, we just got to be more conscious about this shit. Watch him go there and like, yeah, glad he's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I doubt it, but whatever. But that's the thing too. Like, I think a lot of it, like a lot of my sensitivity towards this shit, has come directly from me, like coming, moving to New York because, like, there's so many like eggshells people to walk on between like gentrification and like and culture, and people are like, a lot more sensitive to these things. When like when I was living in fucking Orlando, I didn't think about half this shit. Yeah, like, yeah, not yeah. at all. This food's good. Okay, cool. Meet that yeah. shit. Listen, whatever. Like or or just like just dipping and dabbing in cultures. And to a degree, that's how it should be. But because like again, there's money and there's politics behind all this stuff that we're kind of forced to be conscious of this stuff. Like I think about like if, if I brought one of my uh, other brothers and sisters that live in Connecticut or whatever who were fucking Jamaican the fuck out, I brought them to this Gladys place. And the food was good. They wouldn't really think twice about all this po- political shit. I'm thinking about, like, it's ate the food. Oh, that was pretty good. I'm like, oh, did you know it was made by a fucking white man? They'd be like, oh, okay, whatever. Like, they wouldn't think, they wouldn't, they wouldn't care because they don't, come back. They don't man, live this shit every day. There's a good chance it's made by Mexicans. There's a very <laughs> yeah, good come. chance of that. Like, all these restaurants, they're all Mexicans. Like, that's the funnier thing. Like, you could, you could put whatever stamp or flag or whatever you want to put in front of that, the whatever name. Mm-hmm. Still Mexican guys cooking all of this shit. Mm-hmm. And or Haitians. Like, it's not... I, pff, shit, I've seen at fucking Whole Foods one white person at that express line. Like, whenever I see, <laughs> like, it's always, you know, the people actually still putting, like, putting in the work or whatever, it's still the same people just with a different decor. 
Like it's all the same shit. Like it's yeah, whatever, man. You could you could whatever put the fucking was it the get the wolf from over your eyes or <laughs> the fucking wolf in sheep's clothing or some shit. Like it's all an illusion. Don't don't get it twisted. Same guys are cooking all your guys' shit. Have any other felt that way about like a particular thing, like not even just food, but uh, but with anything like someone trying to appropriate your culture, or whatever, right. your, whatever you associate with. Have you ever felt some like that threatened at some point? You think cool. about the shit more deeply. I think about the shit, but not as deeply as you when it comes to shit like that. Um, like I think about it, but I never felt. What do you say? Do you feel what? Like, like threatened or like? Threatened? Or felt like I don't even. I don't even threaten. Be threatened too harsh for a word, but just felt like uncomfortable. Like I don't necessarily threatened by this dude. Like. I know, like the people that go to these like traditional Caribbean spots are not going to go to this guy's restaurant. Right. He's not going to. They're not. He's not going to put them out of business. He's just building a lane for these people uh, that are coming to this neighborhood. And so, like, but it's felt like kind of. They definitely raised eyebrows for me and for other, some other people too in in, um, in the area. But um, I don't know if I would have just stumbled across that place and saw. I probably would have thought the same thing you thought, but I never really. I guess thought as deeply as you did, like, what is this? Or I don't know, this culture virtual thing. I've just been like, I don't know, whatever. I'll check it out one day and eat it. If I like it. Maybe I'll come back. Maybe I don't. If I don't, if I don't <laughs> like it. I don't know. I wouldn't think too much of it. I don't know, man. I don't know any white people making Dominican food, so I'm okay on that end. <laughs> like, in regards to Mexicans, if that's what you're talking about, like, white people have stolen Mexican culture for fucking years. So you can look at it from any angle, especially like growing up in Windermere or what, not Windermere, but like in Orlando, mm. with all these kids from Windermere and shit, like, they fucking don't all that time during when Bush was running. They want all these Mexicans out of our country. They want the borders. But those are the people doing their fucking lawns, watching their fucking kids, cooking their fucking food. Everybody loves fucking Mexican food and all this weird, stupid shit. Like Chicken. they've been encroaching on that shit for fucking ever. They 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 literally taken all of that shit. They just don't want the people that have started that shit to be around to and tell them, hey, you guys are not doing that shit right. <laughs> You don't see black people start making burritos. Like, I've never that's heard of that gonna, shit in my life. That's what I was saying earlier about Mexicans making, like, American food. Like, I've burgers never, and fries, let's ever get shakes, seen a black dude roll or sushi some or some shit. Like, people don't know that shit. Like, that shit probably tastes like ass. Like, you're going to eat that bullshit. But it's probably also, it won't be, quote, unquote, legitimized if right. someone of a different, you know, race did it besides white people. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's another thing, too. So, it's just kind of like. But that's only on the surface. That's a fucking, that's the thing, like, a lot of people, they want that more comforting look. Like, they want this goddamn guy fietti looking motherfucker telling you like yo this shit is good and like <laughs> oh yeah if the guy from smash mouth thinks it's good then yeah i'm gonna eat this shit like but it's it goes on more levels than just the fucking yeah. like obviously the food thing is like the it's just a it's a very rudimentary part like if you look at hip-hop the reason why they flock towards these white artists or whatever is like hey man they look like us we buy this shit yeah. like is what it is like i'd rather buy mm-hmm. iggy azalea shit because she looks like this girl that i used to like or some weird shit or whatever the fuck it is one of my cousins then uh, fucking then Nicki Minaj is a fucking fat ass. Like, it's just the way it works out. People were yeah. easier to gravitate towards the whole like Limp Biscuit, Linkin Park time to buy Eminem's album versus fucking DMX or some shit. Like, yeah. mm. it's just the way the shit works out or whatever. They just, they want, they're still a large majority of the fucking uh, population. They're the yeah. bigger portion of the, the taxpayers and the fucking go getters and the movers and shakers and shit. So, they're, you know, their voice speaks in volumes compared to everybody else's. But it doesn't make it right, and it's still very awkward when you see this shit. Like it definitely catches my attention. But I do remember yeah. in um, in Tampa there was this uh, hot dog place that was owned by these two black dudes. I forget what it was called, like Big City Hot Dogs or some shit like that, because they were from Chicago, and um, so they had like hot dogs based on different major cities like L.A., New York, and everything. Mm. And me and my buddy went there, and it was really good. But we just kind of knew, like I don't know, like this shit isn't gonna last, just cause, like the restaurant business in general, and because every time we'd go there. Um, I don't know. It just wasn't packed. There wasn't a lot of people in there, and I don't know if I had anything. I mean, the staff was all like you know, like minorities, black teenagers, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And it was. I don't think any white person ever ever worked there. Like, we went there. We went there twice. We didn't see any white people there. It was just owned by two black dudes. And probably like, yeah, two three months later, for a lease. Damn. Sign on there. So I mean, the restaurant business is hard in general. Yeah, but, like, yeah that's what I'm saying. It's that's hard what, in general. That's what like that's what I mean. That's, like that's, I guess that's, I'm just thinking about like you know. Somebody like you know a a, a black duo you know mm. the brothers making like not like a soul food place it's a hot dog know, place like, you know what I'm saying ribs like. yeah <laughs> you know what I'm saying or not wings it was, it was a hot dog place mm. you know what I mean people feel and, more uh, comfortable when they see a white guy in control like or a white girl and like saying like the 
whenever you look at look at retail, if you ever worked retail, it was always all these black and Spanish people working retail, and then the fucking white manager, the white general manager, the white fucking CEO, the white. It's just the way the shit works out. I live in fucking near Dykeman and shit. It is brown fucking central. Brown city. The only three white people they could have hired to be management work at that Target. It is the funniest shit in the world, and they are so <laughs> adamant at talking down on these people. Like, this is the way it is, man. People feel comfort in that. Like, oh, at least somebody knows how to tell these darkies what to do or some weird mm-hmm. shit. Like, that's the thing. That's the thing for me. Like, at the end of the day, I just want more people to think about what they do, particularly white people. Like, I mean, like, eat where you're going to eat, shop where you're going to shop, you know, do the things that you would normally do, but just question about, like, why is it, why it is that you feel more comfortable going to this place or that think place about it. or why this is thriving and why it's not because – the narrative, particularly in America, is that like, oh, if you're the if you're the smartest and the brightest, you'll make it. If your shit is the best, you'll be the you'll you'll be, rise to the top. If you work like, hard at it, you'll yeah. Come but like, there's a lot of layers to that, and there's a lot of reasons why certain things thrive and why other things don't. Why you feel comfortable in certain areas and why you don't feel comfortable in other areas. Why you buy certain products and why you don't buy certain products. So that and that's that's all it comes down to. For I'd go with uh, the whitest and the brightest seem to prosper pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> what what happened if you don't mind me asking? with you and Cuddy. Don't treat your friends like your enemies. Don't turn around and shit on niggas. And that shit ain't had nothing to do with you. Me, who I write verses for and what I do with my money ain't got shit to do with you. And I told all my niggas, and they know, all my niggas. I was like, yo, if I see this nigga, I'm gonna try and snatch his motherfucking teeth out. And I still haven't <laughs> talked to Cuddy. My man ran up on him in LA. Seen him just happen to ride on side of this nigga in his range. Uh-huh. So, you know, Cuddy, let's settle this. Like, talk to me before I fuck you up. Lupe just had his album drop this week and he's making his runs uh one of his stops was at sway's fucking shay 45 show and he had uh gave some backstory to these tweets of these two guys going back and forth and i was under the impression that these guys are fucking friends and shit and it seems like it's on site for lupe when he sees fucking uh cuddy so how you guys fucking feel about this? Come from of all people, Lupe Fiasco, who I always thought was like the happiest, nerdiest little fucking skateboarding back. He dreads he changed. Yeah, he's like fucking. He evolved nah, into the future. That, that interview on Sway was like, yeah, definitely not the not the Lupe that put out Kick Push anymore. But uh, yeah, I thought yeah, I always thought they were, they were cool. So I know yeah, like Lupe helped him out when he was going through his cut. was going through his you know rehab drug shit or whatever. Yeah. And um, so yeah, so now I saw. Uh, on my news feed just headlines of them beefing and going back and forth I was like you know, what's this all about and um surprised to say Lupe said when I find you I'm gonna fuck you <laughs> so I was surprised to hear him say that I thought that guy was all about solidarity and shit I yeah. remember when uh, Chief Key was talking about smacking the fuck out of him on Twitter he he fucking pulled his skirt down and was like hey man I really hope you know he finds Jesus or some other shit like he definitely was more yeah, man, solidarity seemed like the thing for fucking Lupe Fiasco, and I guess hanging around Trey the Truth and some other of these rowdy, rowdy yeah. Negroes has gotten him on some other tip. But, yeah, he sounded like the way he was talking in that interview, yeah, he seemed like he was pretty passionate about yeah. that. And it's almost My like... right-hand man, you could ask him. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, he sounds like he knows he could whoop kick Cuddy's ass, so he's definitely, like, barking on another cylinder kind of shit. Don't get me wrong, it seems like a pretty safe bet if I was, if I was him and at the... To whoop some rapper's ass, um, like it, you're pretty. It being Kid Cudi, you saying? Yeah, like yeah. Uh, bird chested. Kid Cudi has the fucking build of an eighth grader. <laughs> like it makes sense. Yeah, I guess he just got tired of all the skateboarding jokes. He's like, nah, man, I'm from Chicago. I can. I know he's like, he's also like a black belt though too. He's not like he's some. Oh, word. Yeah, he's a black belt. He's like a fucking black belt yeah. and like some type of fucking nunchuck master. Or yeah, his dad shit. was on, yeah, like his his parents or his dad in particular was on some like some ill like black, black panther Muslim military. Yeah, I know about shit. that. Yeah, and so like he knows how to yeah. handle guns and like was wasn't his mom too the same way? Probably. Think, right? yeah. yeah. So like, I believe it, but it's kind of weird for all people. I think it's, maybe it's kind of the the double standard we have with people, particularly. Uh, artists of his caliber that spit some type of conscious rap like oh you can't do that you can't have you know real emotions you can't fight people you're supposed to be this example but you know so what do you think it will come of this like you think eventually man nothing's gonna happen between these two little queers man I don't see <laughs> shit happening from that I don't see no ripples like, just like, more I don't like, know how he's talking about like how hard it is to find somebody like if you have to 
the, if you really want to the, find someone, you can the find forethought someone. to tweet at them, I'm pretty sure you can do a little digging. Hmm. So your concert's coming up in Albuquerque next week. Yeah. All right, I'll be there, motherfucker. Just go to like, KidCuddy.com. You have the means to seek these people <laughs> on out. On site. If you really yeah. wanted to. Yeah. Like, if you really, really want to. I don't, I don't think it's I that serious. I think he's trying to get some fucking get on that Roddy Roddy Piper shit to make his album push a little better or whatnot. Like... Yeah, that could be it. Just Everybody, to say something that catches people's ears to like get people say, "Oh, Lupe saying you're gonna fuck Kid Cudi up." Let me listen to this shit. And then, <laughs> oh, he got an album out too. This was album. Maybe his album didn't. Man, what's the chance whatever, of him so. having an album at the same time he's trying to fight Kid Cudi? Man, this shit is crazy. <laughs> Lupe, that dude. Uh, and no, he's not. I mean, Lupe. He's. I mean, it's not like. It's not like 2008 where he was everywhere, but he's not exactly ghost either. I mean, he still works with Kanye, and then, like assuming that Lupe still talks to Kanye. It's not that hard to find yeah. this dude if you really want to. Well, so I would take for Kanye. But like, but basically, what he's saying yeah, is he, he has the means to find Kid Cudi if he really wanted to. Yeah, no mm-hmm. shit. Like but, everybody has sources. Uh, a lot of these people have the same like publishers or managers or somebody like you get agent yeah. or some weird shit. And off like Cudi's doing movies and shit too. Like you can go on his IMDb page. Oh, this one's in production. <laughs> oh, where are they shooting this shit at? Oh, I'll see you in Albuquerque next week, motherfucker. <laughs> on site. <laughs> Gonna roll through. Put a fork up your butt, <laughs> carrot. Um, but I guess this is the new, the new part of this type of Lupe, who's very active on Twitter, who's taking on all comments. Very. Comments. Well, he's retired from social media. What he said, like he's there or not, or gotten off. See, of that's his a while, only but, fucking. But vessel. he'll be back. He'll be back though, like because he just has. He's one of the people that just has so much shit to say about shit that's going on or whatever. Like I think he'll eventually be back on there, and, and but he always kind of does that shit too. though. He's always kind of teasing people with, "Oh, this is gonna be it. Yeah, this will be my last third album, L- that is true. or whatever. This is my last interview. I'm gonna whoop this guy's ass when I find him." Like, <laughs> uh, no, we don't believe you. Yeah, need he more speaks people. in a lot yeah. of fucking half truths. Like I remember, and I'm a Lupe fan too. No, so. I do like Lupe a lot, but like I remember, like when Lasers came out, it was like okay, like no, when the Cool came out, he was mm-hmm. like. I'm only going to do one more album. Yeah, he said and three or something I was going like to do three yeah, albums yeah. in total. That was going to be it. And then when Lasers was supposed to come out, it's like, oh, I'm going to do this. And that's going to be like, I might have one more after this yeah. one. But I, his, <laughs> but I thought his next album was going to be Food and Liquor, uh, another Food and Liquor. He, he did, yeah. Then he did like, when Food and Liquor 2 came out, yeah. you know, oh, this is not exactly like the album, how I wanted it to be. The labels made me do this. The labels made me do that shit, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But I'm going to do two parts. Yeah. So you guys can get one for the label and one for yeah. you guys. He did kind say of a shit. double album. I remember that at one point. And then fucking this album, I thought this would be his cancer album. If I'm right, he's like, yeah, I'm fighting cancer now and like all this shit, which was a great cause. I forgot all about that. Yeah. Yeah, I guess everybody else did too because this album ain't yeah, about that shit at all. What track <laughs> was that? He had Luisa. What track was that? That's on the album that was supposed to be like for cancer and. Yeah, it's all yeah, about fighting forgot. cancer, and then yeah. like all of a sudden that whole conversation went sideways and all this shit about shooting people up and fucking. Swag and fucking <laughs> punching Kid Cudi in the nuts. Like, I don't know what the fuck. Uh, I don't know. So, what do y'all think about that? Have y'all listened to the album? I listen to half of it. It sounds yeah. good. The guy doesn't make bad music. Like, the one guy, the one thing he can't fall back on is his music. Like, he's good. Mm-hmm. He's really good. Mm-hmm. The problem with him is like, the shit he talks about. People don't like people rapping for days a lot of times. And Lupe kind of does that. Yeah. And like, in this album in particular, one track. he has tracks, he has multiple tracks that are like eight minutes or yeah. longer. Which is a fucking yeah, like that mural track. That's like yeah, it's eight forty something. He's just that's just to make like somebody's nonstop. dicks off. Like no, no one's course. Hear me. Yeah, <laughs> he's just going in and in. That's a little too long for yeah. a fucking song. He can fall back on his music. Like he yeah. makes good fucking music. Like, but he wants to be on something else. He has to have like something extra to draw people in, which I I get. But something tells me about you know threatening to fuck up Kid Cudi is not gonna help your album sales, bro. Like. And I know one thing that's going to fuck his album sales up is getting the fuck off of Twitter because that seems to be the yeah. only attention he's getting because yeah. of the shit and the way he expresses that's why himself I said, on that. I mean, he'll be back. Yeah, I mean, eventually. He'll be yeah, back no on shit. social media. He's going to come out with the yeah. next thing. He's like, hey, I decided to take over Japan. Uh, see you guys next album. And then there's going to be some other shit. <laughs> yeah, like All his fans. Maybe man. that's when Cuddy will, will respond when he finally officially gets off Twitter. It's like, yeah, that's right, bitch. <laughs> you going to do shit. <laughs> Started tweeting at him, like taking all these little stupid ass memes. <laughs> Uh, dude, I'm not gonna lie. When he went back and forth with Azalea Banks, did you guys watch that? He didn't really say shit. I did see that though. That was the funniest was funny. shit yeah. in the world. Yeah. That was the funniest like, shit. She just in kept the world. going in and saying stuff, and then he just had like then she one, started looking two real, words, responses. She, she started looking real thirsty. Like, because yeah. you could tell all the shit she does is for attention, but like the way Lupe was going back at her was like so, so <laughs> that, that, that. good. <laughs> so good. All those little weird fucking memes. Like, so good. But That's the thing with Twitter, though. I mean, I think to a degree, every every artist, particularly in hip hop, has to have some kind of mastery of it, 
but um but when you're going at that when you're just known for trolling people and not so much for your what you're supposed to be yeah. known for is your music it kind of marginalizes you so like a lot of people i feel like aren't gonna be checking for azalea banks or even lupe's new album because he's kind of just know oh that's that guy that's going around like like trolling we still people. know him from like oh that's the, that's kick push days like yeah, you know yeah. the guy that came out with kanye and touch the sky superstar but like, you know kids in high school yeah. like oh that's that one dude that's always fucking responding to everybody saying all this stupid shit talking down to black people yeah, you don't want to be that dude so. it's, uh, yeah but that is his presence right yeah, now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's yeah. his, everybody has their own kind of personality on Twitter. If they have one, if they actually use, like, you could tell he does that shit himself. You get me? Like, you could tell yeah. he's the one making these tweets. These are his thoughts. These are his beliefs and shit like that. And he interacts with everybody. Like, you could see mm-hmm. him literally going back and forth with some fucking random ass guy from Arkansas yeah. or some shit. Like, he goes in and whatever, which is something that I think is cool on, like, a personal level mm-hmm. to have someone that's, that's, like, willing to interact and engage. But which is the whole point of like you know social media yeah. with celebrities to get more closer in, in touch with their fans, right? And stuff. But you should yeah. be filling that void with actual hit music, not with yeah, right, like, yeah, of course, not with yeah. you like trolling of people, course, and, yeah, like, and, and jumping into these. Like conversations. we said in the last podcast, man, you can't fifty cent shit no more, man. She does not <laughs> do you no justice. Fuck, that does not work anymore. I I don't know what the fuck's going on with those two little queers. I hope something. <laughs> um, fucking no, I hope I hope they find Jesus or. Are know. you saying that because Kid Cudi kissed the man in the movie? I just literally found that out today. <laughs> <laughs> but they cut it out of the scene, right? They cut it out of the movie. They said they cut it out of the movie, but I just figured that's why you just call. I him. think Kid Cudi's been kissing dudes on the side <laughs> for a while now. Film. I think he was he was quote unquote practicing. I don't believe that shit. I think Kid Cudi's had a thumb in his butt before, not from a chick, from like a dude with big thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> He's had a lot of good looks though, like Cuddy. Like I remember when he was on that How to Make an America show. Yeah. And he had that one really uh, that fucking white girl. That yeah, uh, big titty white girl in that scene. I was like, damn. Was, he was so. He seemed so out of place though, but so it was still out of place. Cool. <laughs> His fucking nine year old build. Like when he took that shirt off, I was like, oh god, this is gross. <laughs> <laughs> god, Am I watching that big ass head of his? Like yeah, his fucking weird ass bobble head. But yeah, he's had he's had some good looks. Um. But it seems like it's like as soon as one thing starts going right, you know, something starts winding down. Like if his acting starts to look like, you know, he's getting a lot more like uh, looks and shit. Now his music's kind of like rah, rah, rah. like no one's really looking out for it anymore. He's talking about doing like he's Man of Man 3. Right? He's got, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Trying to do Man of Man 3, yeah. which is like even that's kind of thirsty to me. Like when you're constantly just like... Look at little Wayne, like, why the fuck are they giving me five carters? And it was like fucking three or four, sorry for the weights or two, whatever the fuck it is. Oh and it was like, God. I actually did uh, listen to that. That shit is garbage. That <laughs> like, is horrible yeah. rapping. Oh, like, man. it's like almost like I'm just trying to bait you in with the name because, you know, one of these products was good. Like, Carter one, two, and three were good. People like little like, Wayne and like Lupe are like constantly proving the machine right because like, a lot of times it's, it's very popular, especially with like a lot of these rappers coming out of the golden age hip hop and like, oh man, I got I got these I got these hits, man, but the label didn't want to put it out, man. They they're working against me. Da, 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 da. And then you finally hear the music, it's like, yeah, I can see why they want to put that shit out. That shit was garbage. <laughs> like him like I think more Lil Wayne than Lupe. Lupe hasn't dropped the mixtape in forever. And, and the fact that Lupe is true, yeah. The fact that Lupe's let like hit singles like slip oh, yeah. through his like his fingertips, mainly being the one with uh, Bruno Mars and B O B I mean, it finally came out that Lupe had got that shit first from the label. They said, hey, here you go. Here's this track. Got the beat on there. Got the chorus. This guy called Bruno Mars. Just I come up. spit your little, you know, hippie hop raps on it. And he was your like, nah, raps. man, fuck that. Whatever. Like, I don't want to do this song. And then they kind of just coerced him. He did it. So there's no limitation. Limitless since it's initiation. And to the crew, see it's on. Then it grew. Was a pilot. Now we in syndication. And every time we show up, it's pay per view. What a news. You're my satellite. The YouTube. Tell And then, even after he did it, he just let it go. Like, I don't want to put this out. And then they gave it to this other up and coming artist, B.O.B., and then he was out of there. <laughs> like, damn. Yeah, and even more recently, the whole Ed Sheeran song, the oh, was it old school love or old school some shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, he was on Sway talking about how that song was soft and that he didn't want to do it. Like, when he was, you know, approaching this album, mm-hmm. like, Atlantic was like, yo, you got to do these seven tracks. And one of them was that old school love song or whatever. 
and he's like, I don't want to do that shit. That shit's soft, and this is not whatever. And then eventually, he's like, man, fuck it. They want me he's to do it. I'm gonna do like it. That, though. Like, yeah, no even shit. Even the show goes on for lasers. He didn't. He said he didn't even like that. So even when it was out as a single, and he's promoting the album. He even said like he wasn't really feeling it. Didn't really want to do that. But um, that single got him a lot of looks though. Exactly. Like, no you know shit. what I mean? But like, he's always been his his uh, I guess line has always been you know substance in the place of popularity. You know that track would give him popularity but he'd rather spit more other stuff with i think he did. I, I don't know man I, I that's like, just him you know what i mean so i think it's a front i think all that shit's bullshit like i think he knows damn well like this is the, this is the way this shit works you get me there is a yeah a rhythm he knows it but he doesn't he, but he hates that like he'd rather just if he could if he could go on tour without making albums he would just go on tour i think he wants the whole people, time he, he would never make an album believe that i don't really care i, I just think he i think he wants people to believe that uh, he's like this, like a man against the machine type shit. I don't, I don't believe that shit at all. Like, Everybody's anybody wants some Bruno Mars money. I don't care who you are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, like but I think I he's pretty happy shit. with the fucking spins that that song is getting and the attention is getting him, like the yeah. fucking old school love shit or whatever. Um, but yeah, let's oh, fucking Kit Cudi's fucked. I don't, like at least musically, I don't think he's gonna really be doing anything. Like that's like I think that's desperate. The whole doing another version of like Man on the Moon, the one good album that he really had. Oh, what now he's gonna do the fucking third one of this shit because the other doo doo albums he's been dropping haven't worked out. It didn't even that he did like Man on the Moon too. That shit didn't fucking do that great or whatever. It was mediocre to say the least. Fucking yeah, Little Wayne dropping like the third or what was it the second, third, fourth installment of that Sorry for the Wait, and then he has like I am an, I am not a human being or whatever that stupid queer shit is. He's having another one of those drop and then a fifth card or blah, blah blah. Like I think unless just fucking watch next album from Lupe B. Fucking food and liquor three or some shit or the cool part yeah, two or like yeah. some bullshit. Yeah, he was teasing those characters from the cool like on Instagram and shit before he dropped his latest album, and people were thinking like, oh, is it the next album? Is it the, the next cool? Like, like, what's going on? Kind of like him teasing shit again. It had nothing to do with the cool, but I don't know. I think um, he's pretty good at manipulating shit. Yeah. I think he's a smart guy. But just wants people talking. Yeah, uh, saying well, stuff. I think it's got to also be kind of a sore spot for him because of. Um, if he were born and maybe even just like f- five years or so later, he could have had a l- lot more shine when you, and amongst these people that are getting the spotlight now amongst the Kendricks and the J. Coles and the, and the Drakes where like the newer generation starting to embrace lyrics and this type of lyricism. And he, in a lot of ways, he feels like he was cut from that cloth or even he's gave a lot of sight from that. And now he's not really, he's kind of marginalized himself through all these different things that he's not getting the kind of benefit that these guys are able to get from it. And you know he has he has put out great albums before he has the lyrics has a skill, but for what, for whatever reason, I mean I think there's a bunch of reasons, but yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever reason, what like more they, did he fucking want? Like that's the kind of like I don't know, man. There's certain there's a certain there's a certain point where you just gotta say like, hey man, just like stop being a bitch. Because <laughs> I remember when Food and Liquor came out, everybody was losing their fucking mind over Food and Liquor. Oh my god, that kick that kick push dude's like. He actually has some pretty fucking tight songs and some good music. And Jay Z's fucking co signing, like, fucking wanted an EP on this shit. And, like, Nas saying his favorite rapper right now is fucking Lupe. And, like, mm-hmm. what the fuck else do you want? And you have fucking Kanye producing tracks in your shit. Mike Shinoda doing tracks in your shit. Pharrell doing tracks in your shit. At that time, like, good God, how much, yeah. how big do you want to, like, what kind of erection do you want off of this shit? Like, and then the cool, I thought, I thought the cool was even was better. Amazing. I like the cool, yeah, yeah. I like Lasers too. Yeah. All this shit. Like, I've liked all of his albums. All of his albums have been I pretty like good. I like that much. I mean, I like it, but I don't know that much. It wasn't like the first two to me. But, yeah, um, well, I think that's a stigma for most artists. They end up going across that like they can't like usually the first couple albums just stick yeah, harder. Of course, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I thought I liked I like Lasers a lot, and yeah. then I liked fucking the Food and Liquor part too. I thought it was a good album. Um, yeah, I like that one better than the Lasers actually. I like that album a lot, and this new album like I haven't listened to it in entirety, but. Tell you right now, him talking about beating Kid Cudi does not make me want to listen to it. <laughs> uh, well, that's what we got for you guys this fucking this Monday. Um, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for streaming. Thank you for downloading. Uh, please continue to subscribe, rate, check us out on iTunes. Uh, check out that fucking Twitter page. Check out our website. Whatever you can do, just uh, keep keep this in the conversation. Um, tell your friends. Tell your mother. Um, I said hi. Peace. Peace.